Well, hi, everybody. So hopefully you're all still with us. Um, I know we're ending um, near the end of the event now. So for this presentation, as you probably already know, I have with us um, Joshua, the project manager of, of City West Water, as well as a couple of members of our own technical team here at McTish. So we have our resident uh, content manager expert, Kylie, and our, our data migration expert, Tian. How are you guys going today? Good, good, thanks. Going pretty well. Awesome. So we'll be talking um, about City West Water's data migration from Trim to SharePoint Online that McTish um, helped deliver. So just a bit of background, like many government agencies, City West Water had an outdated EDRMS that was not capturing a large percentage of their organizational content. And with everything moving to the cloud and people working remotely, they decided to take advantage of the COVID situation and really accelerate their move to SharePoint Online. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And for this presentation, I just wanted to spice things up um, a little bit and do something a little different. So rather than just give another just typical standard presentation, what we're going to do is do this as more of a casual um, moderated conversation where me as the non-expert in the room can ask the experts in the room um, questions. And then at the end, of course, we will bring in um, you guys, the audience, um, and you'll have the opportunity to ask um, Josh or or anyone from McTish here questions as well. So and, and feel free, of course, to ask those questions throughout the discussion, but we'll we'll get to them at the end the way we have for the, the previous um, presentations. So with that said, let's get into it. So to start the ball rolling, um, my first question for you, Josh, is why did City West Water decide to move to SharePoint Online? Yeah, so, you know, with everything moving to the cloud and everyone working remotely since uh, COVID, we really wanted to take advantage of that situation um, and allow for everyone to re work remotely with SharePoint Online, whereas previously we had the on-prem solution. Yep. Um, that was really a roadblock for us. Um, with, this, with the COVID situation, like you said, it's really accelerated our movement into the cloud. Um, and so far, the feedback has been very, uh, very good. Awesome, awesome. So what were the considerations when you decided that you were going to move to SharePoint Online? What were the considerations of the move from a records management perspective? Yeah, one of the biggest uh, factors was that we didn't want users to have to actively manage their records. So we tried to manage the, the records in place. And using something like Records 365 uh, with SharePoint Online, we were able to achieve that. Tradition, traditionally, when we had something like Trim, we, we needed users to actively log into Trim or to move their files and store it within that repository. Um, but now with Records 365, we can manage the content uh, in SharePoint Online. And as a matter of fact, in any of other systems, we decide to integrate to as well. So now our users only need to uh, work with their data within their allocated SharePoint locations, and, and we're able to manage that uh, those, those records. Awesome. And so did you have to have any, you know, because I know there's, you know, some people have had concerns about, um, you, know, you know, about, you know, I, I understand you guys are using um, Records 365 in the background to help with making sure that you're complying in SharePoint Online, but did you have to have any conversations with the National Archives or with PROV um, prior to this move? And if so, like, what, what did you learn in, the, in those conversations? Yeah, in fact, we did have a few meetings with Prov before we sort of embarked on this journey and, and throughout there as well. Uh, as we understand, there are sort of three views on how you can record keep at the moment. The first one is your traditional uh, EDRMS system, as I mentioned, uh, keeping that all in the, the single repository. Um, there's then our approach where you manage the records in place with something like uh, Record 365. Um, and the final one, which was discussed, but haven't actually seen it in practice, is um, managing your records within the Microsoft 365 suite. Mm -hmm. So those were some very early day discussions, um, and we have yet to see it in practice. Okay, sure. Yep. Um, so I guess, could you give um, Josh for the audience like a general overview of of what the approach was of moving out of Trim to SharePoint Online? Because I know you guys were on a pretty old version of, of Trim, I believe, as well. Yeah. Yeah, so thanks to Tien and Kylie as well, uh, we had to upgrade, in essence, our very, very old version of Trim. So I think we were something like 72 versions behind. <laughs> Um, and unfortunately, you can't get the data out of something so old. So what the approach that we had taken was to upgrade our con update the trim to the latest version of Content Manager, 
Um, Tien then used Zilio to extract that into a staging database, which we then loaded into our SharePoint Online eventually. Um, and thanks to the, the mapping spreadsheets that Tien provided, we were able to sort of show that, um, um, that mapping from Trim to SharePoint Online. Awesome. Source awesome. to target mapping. Yeah, yeah. So, so Kylie, um, I, I know um, Josh just mentioned about the, the having to upgrade uh, content manager. So I guess why did we actually have to, or why did City West Water um, need you to come in and upgrade their content manager system prior to performing the migration? And how did you approach doing that? Well, basically, with the extraction code that Tian was using to extract the information out of Content Manager, it was only available using the Service API for Content Manager 9.4. So that was the main reason why we had to do the upgrades. And because uh, City West Water was on Trim version 6.12, we had to do multiple stepped upgrades to get to the latest version of Content Manager 9.4. And that basically involved building three separate environments, uh, Trim 6.24, uh, Trim 7.2, and we ended up with the Content Manager 9.4 environment, our final destination. To get to 9.4, what we needed to do was to back up the Trim 6.12 database grab a copy of that, we restored that into the Trim 6.24 environment and proceeded to do the upgrade using the Enterprise Studio functionality that Trim provides. Fantastic functionality. Once the upgrade was completed, we did some maintenance on that database and some data integrity checks to make sure that the data was as it was supposed to be and the database was in pretty good condition before we performed the next upgrade. Once again, we performed the same set of tasks, backed up the up uh, the database from 624 environment, restored it into the Trim 7.2 environment and proceeded to do the upgrade using the Trim Enterprise Studio functionality. Once again, we did do the uh, data-based maintenance tasks to make sure the database was in good condition. Plus, we also did some data integrity checks to make sure that what we started with was still there when we finished. Everything was fine. And then the final step again was to back up that database that was upgraded to the 7.2 schema and restore it into the Content Manager 9.4 environment, which then allowed us to do that final uh, schema upgrade. So the schema was on the Content Manager 9.4 version. Once again, double checked our database maintenance to make sure the database was in pretty good condition, and it was. And we also, we always do a data integrity check to make sure what we started with was still there when we finished the upgrade. Once I'd actually finished the final upgrade to 9.4, we also made sure the Content Manager Service API was installed into that environment. I handed the environment over to Tian, who could then perform the extraction of the data. Wow, so quite a lengthy process, I'm gathering, Kylie, it sounds like. It was, it was. Yeah, so, so Tian, after that Content Manager was upgraded to the, to the latest version, could you tell me how exactly you went about performing the migration? You know, what tools did you use? What were the steps that you took from a technical perspective without, of course, giving away any of our trade secrets? Yeah, sure, I can uh, I can talk about that. So um, I'd just like to um, just share some slides that I've uh, prepared. Sure. So I'll just bring those up. All right, can you guys see that? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so I'll just, um, I guess I'll start by outlining um, City West Water's situation uh, before the data migration and where they wanted to be. So um, as you can see, the Trim slash Content Manager database that contained um, electronic and physical records configured across, across multiple uh, record types. Um, the physical records were to be migrated to um, Records 365 and the electronic records were to be migrated to uh, five different uh, sites or document libraries in SharePoint Online. So uh, we use a standard ETL process, extract, transform and load uh, to execute our migrations. So it's nothing really new if, um, if, you, know, if you know how um, data migrations work. Um, so we use a tool called Zilio. It's effectively a scripting language and a staging database um, that allows us to do complex mappings and transformations quite easily. So there's, there's much more flexibility in what we can do with Zilio as opposed to other migration tools. 
and Zilio also has uh, you know many uh, built ready built connectors for different content repositories so we're not limited to trim and SharePoint online. So during the extract stage, um, uh, the Zilio tool connects to um, the Trim Content Manager database via service API, as uh, kind of mentioned, and all the all the records are extracted and stored in in the staging database. So during the mapping stage, um, the records that have been extracted, um, the Zilio tool goes over each record's metadata, so using data such as record type, container, or location to determine where the record should be migrated to. During the transform stage, uh, the metadata fields that have been identified by City Westwater as needing to be preserved um, are mapped to the pre-configured columns in SharePoint online and also the, um, uh, the pre-configured columns required uh, for import into Records 365. Mm. I guess an, another example of um, some transformations that are required are uh, just removing non principal ASCII characters um, from, from some of the um, metadata fields that can appear in Trim and Content Manager because they're, uh, they're not liked by SharePoint Online and um, the migration will fail if those right. characters aren't removed. Okay, so um, during the load stage, the physical records were outputted to a format uh, required by record point uh, for import. Electronic records, the, um, the documents were retrieved from the document storage and the associated metadata was uploaded um, into SharePoint online. Um, so the bulk of the load was done prior to the cutover weekend. Uh, and then during the cutover weekend, we'd follow the same uh, ETL process, but only for changed and new records uh, to complete the migration. And that's uh, that's it in a nutshell. Awesome. No, thanks, Tian. That was that was really informative. Um, so, Josh, I guess I'll I'll pass back to you. So, you know, now that the migration's obviously been completed for for a little bit, like how has it changed the way, or has it changed the way your end users work? Yeah. So, users um, have loved SharePoint Online uh, on its own. Uh, due to mainly the fact that it's on the cloud and you know it's accessible uh, from any device and from anywhere, yeah. um, and the fact that we've moved to SharePoint Online, it's it's opened up the doors to um, a lot of the users and, and sharing their documents across uh, cross function and not not only with their teams. So we've had to really open up the doors between the traditionally siloed um, approach that a lot of the teams had. Um, and we went with a sort of open by default uh, strategy at City West Water, where you know unless the data was sensitive, we users could access the information. Um, and you know now that they can just work with their files and not have to think about where to put it in a records management system, uh, has sort of removed that uh, activity from them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess. What have been the 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 business outcomes, and 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 what do you think would be the the projected outcomes of this migration over the next couple of years for City West Water? So you know, obviously, we want to move to a, a fully compliant organisation in terms of record keeping, and and we believe that it's it's an ongoing task. Um, we have our records officer, Michael, who's working on this daily daily with the business teams on you know what are the classification rules that we need to have within SharePoint Online. You know when shall we be destroying data based on our RDA? So we're slowly um, getting better and better each day. Um, mm -hmm. and in a perfect world, in the future, we would um, see these records disposed of uh, immediately once the classification has taken place. Yeah, uh, we're still getting to that stage. So yeah, that's that's the business outcome we'd we'd like to move to. Awesome. So obviously, like you said, it's like it's a work in progress. But would you say that you are? Um, you know, more records management compliant now than you were pre the migration? Yeah, de definitely. I mean, if you look at just um, from the size alone and the data alone, we had something like two terabytes that were sitting within Trim. Mm -hmm. um, now that you look at all the SharePoint data that's being managed, we're already up to 10 terabytes of data. So awesome. immediately you're looking at, you know, fivefold worth of data that's being record kept essentially. Yeah, yeah no, that, that's a great result. Absolutely. 
Um, well, well, thank you guys. I, I think that covers everything I wanted to um, to ask you guys about. So I think now we'll just um, head on over and, and, and we'll, we'll just start the audience um, Q&A. So um, thank you very much. And, and yeah, we'll be we'll stay online and we'll be typing our responses and um, responding to all the questions that you guys have asked. Um, so thank you very much. Thanks, Luke. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.